Having lived in China for several years, Cavallo witnessed major economic and social changes in China. What impressed him the most? Where is China heading and why does the West get China wrong very often? Earlier, I talked to Evandro Cavallo, head of the Center for Brazil-China Studies at the Getulio Vargas Foundation School of Law in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. He was joining me from Buenos Aires, Argentina. How much do you understand the um, governance style and uh, thoughts on governance of President Xi? Because you spent a couple of years in China, you saw China with your own eyes, you delved into Chinese political science and practices on different levels. What do you think makes China tick? And why do you think China and Brazil and other emerging countries together will bring great stability to the world in a time of uh, much uncertainty. I lived in China for three years in my life, 2013 to 2015. And since then, I have made frequent uh, trips to the country to take part in its seminars or etc. Uh, interrupt, of course, due to the pandemic, naturally. Uh, but uh, uh, since those times and uh, those years in, in China have been follow, following developments in Chinese society, and undoubtedly the elimination of the extreme poverty is the main one, and the achievement uh, got by the Chinese government. And this fact, which is the realization of a historic commitment by the Communist Party of China, demonstrates the success of the Chinese political system and also of the Chinese nation. And, uh, and, and, uh, and I think that the world uh, needs to be more open to understanding China and learning from China as well, just as China has striven to understand the world and learn from it. And uh, if I say an example, in the, at the end of the uh, 70 decades, China's stage of economic development was similar to the economic and social reality of the Brazilian Northeast at that time. Both were poor, you know, and uh, in just over 40 years, China has become the second largest economic power. And uh, China should serve as an inspiration, I believe, for the Brazilian Northeast especially, and I have been very insistent on this here in Brazil when I talk with my colleagues, mainly because I'm from Recife, the capital of Pernambuco. Pernambuco is one of the provinces or states of the northeast of Brazil. So mm -hmm. the combination, you know, between the Chinese political system and also, uh, of course, the Chinese wisdom, the Chinese approach, the Chinese culture, all of this is part of the development of this, the, 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 the development of the, the economy of China and also the society. This is the, all of this contribute uh, to uh, to make China the second, you know, economic power in the world, uh, and probably in the years, in the, the near future, will be the number one. Hopefully, um, if people listen to you, they a lot of people they probably feel that they're listening to they're in a completely different world because if they switch to other international channels, they most likely will hear a completely different story. China is doing this wrong. China is doing that wrong. Um, China is a threat that China needs to be countered. The U.S. Congress just, you know, set up a bipartisan committee to find the fundamental source to keep the U.S. edge over China, so on and so forth. Basically, you know, China is evil and stuff like that. Um, why is there such a huge gap? And what are you going to tell to those people who have been immersed in a Western narrative about China, especially about the political system, to help them understand China a little bit better? Yes, so first, there is a huge uh, lack of understanding about what China is. And the West all the time try to say to the world, uh, um, what China 
should be, stuff like this, you know, and not understand what China is. And I think the world needs to understand China as it is, the reality of China, considering the Chinese culture as well. But uh, of course, there is a, uh, you know, uh, competition in the world, right? And uh, uh, and the, the the Cold War mind is also something that create obstacle to understand China as well. So we need to understand China, considering the history of China is uh, so large. The history of China, not only you know the twenty century and the Cold War mind to understand the country. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. Mm, yeah, okay. Any specific suggestions you can give to the people of Brazil who may be interested in China, but who have yet to have the opportunity to understand it better? Uh, I think the first step is, you know, uh, know, read more about China, know the Chinese people, uh, establish this connection, friendship, uh, because this is important. There are a lot of... uh, aspects of the Chinese culture that is very interesting to all the world. And this is what I suggest to all people here in Brazil, you know, try to avoid the fake news, try to avoid only, uh, you know, a uh, Cold War uh, perception what? of the world. What, what would be a practical, what would be an example of an entry point into the Chinese world of culture from your personal experience? What got you into the Chinese world of culture? You mean uh, an example? A poem, a movie, a okay. dish, a song. <laughs> there are a know, lot of something things. Something that the Brazilian people yeah. can relate to easily. What worked for you? Okay. I think, of course, when we... Nowadays, we have a lot of uh, Chinese movies, very interesting, you know, uh, not only based on the the di- dynastic era, but also contemporary China. This is a way uh, to know more, especially contemporary China. Uh, there are a lot of, you know, informations in movies, even in some platforms on internet. And the people here, they can, they have access of these movies. First, mm-hmm. I think this is important to know more. Second, and uh, try to to go beyond the stereotype. This is also a, a one important thing. Uh, for example, the Chinese culture is very sophisticated. When we look, when we consider, for example, the uh, the food, you know, the cuisine, Chinese cuisine is very sophisticated, very very elegant as well, and very tasty. And there are several kinds of dishes in, in China. You know, if you if you taste the the, the Beijing uh, food or Shanghai or Yunnan, you know, uh, uh, Xinjiang food as well. So a lot of uh, that there there is a huge diversity of uh, the foods, you know, and and uh, and the cuisine in, in China. So and uh, the music as well. The contemporary Chinese music is also beautiful, you know. Uh, when I was uh, when I lived in China, I attend some jazz festivals and also rock festivals, and it's very interesting. And uh, the people here in Brazil, they have no idea, you know, how beautiful and interesting and uh, and uh, evolved is the 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 Chinese art. Mm-hmm. Well, definitely, I hope through our work, I mean, my work and work like by people such as you, um, there will be more understanding about China and vice versa, so that the people would understand each other better. We're going to leave it there. Many thanks, Dr. Evandro Cavallo, Professor of International Law, Head of the Center for Brazil-China Studies of the um, Getúlio Vargas Foundation or FGV School of Law in Rio de Janeiro. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Liu.